In today's video, we'll take a look at how an integral overflow can influence a for loop such as to become an infinite loop. So let's start with a simple array. Let's say we have here an array of integers, 256 uh, integers inside that array. And what I want is to assign to every single integer inside that array, the value negative uh, five. That's arbitrary, it doesn't really matter. So you say here int i and then a for loop, i equals zero, i less than 256 and i plus plus. And then I go, okay, well, array of i equals negative five. And let's say after assigning it, I'm gonna also go ahead and print f every single value here. So percent d, let's say space, and then array of i. And now if I try to run this, I should get negative five, let's say 256 uh, times. That should be the amount of negative five digits we got here. Nice. Um, now, you might realize that for this for loop, there's a small optimization you can, you can do due to the fact that uh, i is going from zero to 256. Well, you don't need four bytes for this i, right? You just need basically one byte because you only go from zero to 255. So it only takes just one byte to iterate to all the numbers. So you say, okay, well, I can use just a simple unsigned char for this thing. I say unsigned char here, right? And then, well, i equals zero, that's fine. And it's going to go through to one, two, three, four, five, up until 255 and break when it's uh, after all this, right? So now if I try to run this, you'll notice that I entered an infinite loop and this guy just continues printing, printing, printing like there's no tomorrow. So what happened? What happened in this situation? Well, something very interesting happened. First, it was an integral overflow, but where? Well, remember when I said how the for loop iterates over these uh, sections, like, like first is the initialization section where you first initialize i to be zero and then you check the condition you go through the code itself and then you increment and so on and so forth so if you put a breakpoint here inside the for loop and break when i is 254 we can see that okay it's it's going to first assign to array of i which is right now just some garbage value so it's going to assign the number uh negative five to it right that's negative five now it's going to print it on the screen. Then we can see here that it gets incremented to 255. Nice. Now, array of 255 is the last integer inside our array that's being assigned to. The value negative five, that works. It gets printed on the screen. But once we iterate over this section of the code, right? Once we go over I++, you'll notice that I went to zero. So once you get to 255, if we increment it by one, you get zero, right? That's because of integral overflow. That's because of what we talked in a previous video. And once it's zero, well, zero is still less than 256. So it continues the loop, right? And it continues it 255 times. It gets to 255 again right? And then it increments to zero because it cannot go to 56 and uh, i is again zero and so on and so forth, right? This continues infinitely. So as a matter of fact, the, the issue is that in this situation, our unsigned char i can never ever be higher than 255. You can never store a, a value higher than 255 sure it can store 256 different numbers right the representation allows for that because 2 to the power of 8 is uh 256 but because we have to include z zero we only have the numbers from zero to 255 so once we get to 255 if we add one we get past the limit and we come back to zero and that's why this is an infinite loop so you have to be careful with this uh this is more prevalent in C where you kind of have to optimize this or you might want to optimize this for loop, right? In other languages, you usually just use an int and uh, int uh, 
limit for integral overflow is quite high and you usually don't get there but just be careful in case you do actually find infinite loops for such a reason so in this situation the simple uh, the simple solution would be to just change this to a short right so now it's just it's two bytes and this value can be uh, higher than 255 thus we can actually get out of the for loop so if I try to run this again all right so here I is 254 we go over it once we increment we check the condition it's still true that's fine again we print it on the screen array of 255 the last element and then we add one and we get out of the loop because 256 can be represented inside our two byte unsigned short variable here and that's why we're able to uh, that's why we're able to print on the screen all the values without getting an infinite loop all right so I hope this was useful as you can see actually the, uh, the ID does uh, tell me that this is an infinite loop in fact but most IDEs won't tell you that so just keep that in mind and I hope this was useful uh, if you do have any questions then do leave them down in the comments below or on our discord server thank you so much for watching bye